Okay, and now we've seen that um, when we're in the second row, there's different patterns for the dashes, and you just have to look up in the book and maybe memorize. Uh, basically, you can see that this is the dividing point, right? Everything to the left of this dividing point has one pattern, and everything to the right of this dividing point has this new pattern. I think in your book they only did oxygen and fluorine, but if we also did neon, I think that would also still keep with the same new pattern, because it's to the right of that dividing point. Does that apply for other levels below it? Um, I think so. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. I think things start to get more complicated there, and the, the theory starts to diverge more from, from the actuality. But I think if you were doing a problem, I think you would tend to assume that, yeah. Um, or maybe you would be given a hint in the problem. But I, if I was doing a problem, I would assume that things to the left of here follow the previous pattern, and things to the right follow the new pattern. And so could we do this with, like, um, just to pull something out, like HCN or, like, Right. Something that came together instead of just like the N2 or O2. Or yeah, that's a good question. Okay, so now we want to start complicating things, maybe. Okay, so uh, let's see. So, um, well, the first thing we can do here is let's say we were doing, before we do more atoms, let's start thinking about ions. How would this picture change for O2 plus? On one side. So I can take away, which electron should I take away? This one, right? Not this one. Should I take away an electron from here? No. No, because we're only losing one electron. How many electrons do I have to erase from here? So this would be the picture now. All right. Uh, so is this paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Paramagnetic. Still paramagnetic. By the way, this is a common type of test question. Sometimes people say, which of the following diatomic molecules um, loses its paramagnet, paramagnetic character when you ionize it. Well, we can see that oxygen does not lose its paramagnetic character when you ionize it because it had two unpaired electrons. So this would still be paramagnetic. How about the bond order? Um, which of these numbers is going to change? The, 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 yeah, so the So now we have a bond order of 2.5. Okay, good. Um, how about if we had O2 minus? We'd add another one. Another electron. Well, we have two now. Yeah, first of all, um, I'd have to add one to get back to the neutral oxygens. And now I should add one more? Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't matter which side I add it to, so I can add it to here. Um, and so this is what the neutral oxygens picture looked like. Mm -hmm. So what should I do for the O2 minus? Is this still paramagnetic? Yeah. Yeah. So it turns out that for neutral oxygen, you can't lose the paramagnetic character by either adding or losing an electron. But that might be different from other elements. That's a, a common way the test questions are made. It, they, uh, they, they can ask you which of these loses its paramagnetic or diamagnetic character when you add or drop electrons. Let's figure out the new bond order. So which of these numbers would change now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right. So the bond order now would be one half of three or one point five. Notice that in a sense it's bad to add more electrons here because we're adding them to the anti-bonding level. We don't want to have to put electrons in the anti-bonding level. So as we add electrons to the anti-bonding level, we're losing bond order. So um, for O2. Of these three species, which has the strongest bond? Uh, O2 plus. Because that was the one that had the fewest anti-bonding electrons up here. What did we get the bond order for that? It was 2.5? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This had a bond order of 2.5. This had a bond order of 2. And this had a bond order of only 1.5, which is the one we just figured out. Uh, because this is the one with the most anti-bonding electrons, and this is the one with the fewest anti-bonding electrons. So which is the strongest bond, uh, the O2 plus. Experimental evidence supports these predictions. Excellent.